Tesla earnings are out. The stock is up over 7% after hours. Why is Tesla stock headed higher? Where's it going next? I've got you covered. Headline, Tesla shares jump 6% on profit beat. If you look at it, it's actually up over 9% after hours. Now, one thing to note here, revenue did come in just shy of expectations. So EPS, very solid, 72 cents a share versus 58 cents expected. Revenue, 25.18 billion versus expectation, 25.37 billion. So again, a slight miss here. Revenue increased 8% in the quarter from 23.35 billion a year earlier. Net income rose about 2.17 billion or 62 cents a share from 1.85 billion or 53 cents a share a year ago. Profit margins were boosted by automotive regulatory credit revenue during the quarter, 700 $139 million. Of course, the company has been offering an array of discounts to incentivize sales. Of course, stocks like Tesla are interest rate sensitive. We've been talking about this in the channel for a while. When rates are higher, it's more expensive to finance a vehicle. And so Tesla has been having to use those incentives to get people to buy their cars during a tough time for the automotive industry as a whole. Now, in theory, as the Fed lowers rates, of course, interest rate sensitive stocks like Tesla should benefit. Automotive revenue itself increased 2% to $20 billion from 19.5 $63 billion in the same period a year ago. Energy generation, something that I think is big in the future for Tesla, soared 52% to $2.38 billion. Now, of course, the majority of their revenue is still from automotive, but I do think the energy and the storage business can be huge for Tesla down the road. Services and other revenue also jumped 29% to $2.79 billion. And this is a great infographic to break it down. You can see the light blue is total automotive revenues, services and other in that dark blue color, and then energy generation and storage in the yellow. You can see the top of this chart here is 24 billion and it's hit that a couple of times this quarter is just shy but a big improvement from two quarters ago as you probably know already earlier this month tesla reported third quarter vehicle deliveries of 462,890 and also produced 469,796 evs in the period ending september 30th so deliveries did increase by six percent from a year earlier but did fall short of analyst expectations and a quote here despite ongoing macroeconomic conditions we expect to achieve slight growth in vehicle deliveries in 2020 so if you're buying this stock, you're thinking about 2025 and beyond, probably five or more years if you're buying Tesla stock. Now, if you haven't watched the autonomous event that Tesla had, it was pretty interesting. It had mixed reviews. Some people really liked it. Others didn't. But the cyber cab, this is announced here. Talking about autonomous vehicles, this could be big for Tesla in the future. It's kind of a cool design. A lot of people say these designs are basically a ripoff from iRobot. Now, what's interesting about that is you can see here, we robot. So it's not really hiding it. So this RoboVan is space for up to 20 people and designed for autonomy. Robo taxi charging, wireless charging removes the need for a human. Of course, Optimus is a moonshot for Tesla. A lot of people think that, hey, everybody's gonna wanna have one of these in their house. Of course, there's gonna be competition. The reality is not everybody's gonna wanna have one. Just like if you think of Oculus, you think of AR, VR goggles, it's not for everybody. The Fremont, California factory just produced its seven millionth vehicle, which I think is something to point out. Powerwall 3 is also available now. And this is really important. This is the semi-factory in construction continues to progress. Now look at this picture because it's eye-opening. This is September 4th, 2024, and this is a month and a week later, October 11th, 2024. Look at how much progress they've made. Now this factory is going to be 4 million square feet. Once operational, Tesla expects to produce 50,000 semis per year. That would make Tesla the second largest semi-manufacturer in the United States. That includes electric and diesel, behind only the number one, which is Freightliner. So lots of irons in the fire for Tesla, when you think of autonomous, you think of semis, you think of energy and energy stores, autonomous robo taxis, and much more. Now, many people think that Tesla is an AI and robotics company. Others think it's just an automotive company. Depending on how you view Tesla, you're going to put a different value on it. And this is always going to be that polarizing stock, the bear bull case. I'd like you to comment below. Let me know. Do you think that this is an AI, this is a technology company, or is it just a car company? Now, these are some important metrics for you to take a look at as well. Cash, operating in cash flow, $6.3 billion in Q3. So cash and cash equivalents or investments, they're saying here, $2.9 billion increase, and they're sitting on $33.6 billion in cash. So not going to run out of cash anytime soon. Increased the AI training compute by over 75% in Q3. So is it an AI company or not? Cybertruck becomes the third best-selling EV in Q3 in the US behind only the Model Y and the Model 3. Over 2 billion miles, billions and billions and billions.
driven cumulatively on FSD supervised as of Q3 with more than 50% on version 12. Cost of goods sold, this is important for margins, came down to the lowest level ever at $35,100. Trying to make EVs affordable for everyone, including making total cost of ownership per mile competitive with other forms of transportation. Despite sustained macro headwinds and others pulling back on EV investments, we remain focused on expanding our vehicle and energy product lineup, reducing costs and making critical investments in AI projects and production capacity. We believe these efforts will allow us to capitalize on ongoing transition in the transportation and energy sectors. I look at Tesla as a clean energy, a green energy conglomerate. It's almost like its own little ETF. It's why I own it in my portfolio. This is one of my top holdings, probably in the top 10. I haven't looked at my portfolio for a little bit. When you look at numbers like total automotive revenues, you can see you know 2% year over year, but energy 52%, services 29% we talked about earlier, 8% total on revenue. The big thing and why the stock is popping, 20% here in total gross profit. If you recall, Tesla has been one of those stocks where the market would pay a premium if the, the margins were higher than the competition. So even if it is a car company, if it has twice good margins, well, we can pay a bit of a premium on the price of the stock. Margins have been compressed and they're starting to come back. Now we said a couple quarters ago that we saw the, the trough of that and you would start to see that accelerate and improve. And that's exactly what's happening here. Later, we're gonna look at a chart and you can see where we were buying it in Discord. I also tell you where I think the stock could be headed next. Of course, charts are just possibilities. But adjusted EBITDA margin, you know, 243 basis points, 24%, some pretty solid numbers here across the board. Operating expenses down 6% and so on. So in a nutshell, growth in deliveries, growth in energy generation and storage, as well as services and other, higher FSD revenue recognition year over year, higher regulatory credit revenue, which is a plus, but it could also be looked as a con. It's a pro, but it could be looked at as a con or a risk as well. If these go away, this could impact Tesla significantly. Reduce the ASP, that's the average selling price. So you got lower cost per vehicle. You've got growth in vehicle deliveries, decrease in operating expenses. These are the key metrics that are sticking out to me right now at first glance. So you see that Model 3 and Y production up 6%, other models 91%, so things like the Cybertruck, other model deliveries 43%. Of course, if Tesla can keep coming out with new vehicles and selling those and expand their product line, that is going to be huge for Tesla and its future growth. And I think the Semi is a big part of that, as well as other vehicles that are coming down the pipeline. Cybertruck, it is kind of a novelty, but a lot of people are buying them right now. And that storage deployed up a whopping 75%. Supercharger stations up 20%. Connectors, 22% and more. Now looking at capacity, you can see the different factories here from California, Berlin, Texas, Nevada, Shanghai. This is a great update here. Some good infographics. One thing that sticks out, Cybertruck production increased sequentially and achieved a positive gross margin for the very first time. This is talking about the FSD miles driven as well as artificial intelligence intelligence, software, and hardware. In Q3, they released the 12.5 series of FSD supervised. I do think FSD has come a long way if you look at the newer releases. Our summer release included YouTube and Amazon Music as native apps. Parents can now enable parental controls via PIN. I think there's a whole ecosystem here to be aware of. So they're telling us they're between two major growth waves. The first began with the global expansion of the Model 3 and Y platform, and believe the next one will be advances in autonomy and introduction of new products, including those built on our next generation vehicle platform. Plans for new vehicles, including more affordable models. We've heard about this for a long time. We've talked about on the channel, the $25,000 model. We'll see what happens with that. That remains on track for startup production the first half of 2025. And this could be big for Tesla. It really could be huge. These vehicles are gonna utilize the next gen platform as well as the current platforms. And they'll be able to be produced on the same manufacturing lines as their current vehicle lineups, meaning they don't have to build new factories and sp spend a bunch of CapEx, which the market never likes. You can see Tesla right now is up over 8% after hours, 52 week high, 271, 52 week low, 138.80 after hours, about $233 a share. So we're sitting around a $700 billion market cap, the TTM, the 12 months trailing PE around a 60. So looking at the fundamentals here in the valuation, is it a cheap stock? Not really, right? Profitability, you see those numbers are improving. Seeking Alpha gives it an A plus 17%. This number is a little bit higher, which is good. You know, growth, it's starting to come back 12.65% and that valuation, it is expensive and this is where it's going to be tough for if you're a value investor say hey, this is just a car company it's no different than ford or gm there's no way i'm paying 115 
Ford Gap P ratio for Tesla. And that's a fair point. This stock is definitely not for everybody. You know, looking at price to sales, Ford, 6.96. Now that's really expensive. Is it the most expensive stock I've looked at in the last week? Not even close. Some of them are 40 and 50. I'm not saying that it justifies a seven. The market itself is pretty expensive right now in a lot of areas. And looking at analyst price targets, guys, this is never a reason to buy or sell a stock, but you have 11 buys, 16 holds, eight sells. Very polarizing, bears versus bulls, of course. You've got 207.83. So that's a 2.72% downside, actually more downside because it's up 9% after hours. The highest price target on the street, these are Wall Street analysts, $310. The lowest, 24.86. Of course, this is a very huge spectrum. So it's gonna give you an average price target of 207.83. Now these are extreme bears. And some people would argue these are extreme bulls. And you get a number that's really hard in the middle. What is Tesla really valued? It depends on how you look at it. It really depends on your time frame too. Of course, traders are going to jump into this stock. They're going to buy and sell. They're going to try to make a profit. If you're investing in it long term, you're thinking about the future and the growth in so many areas that we just talked about on this video. I'm going to show you a chart next, and that's going to tell you where we were buying, where the stock could be headed next. If you're new here and you want to be a better investor, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click that bell for notifications. And if this video was helpful at all, please return the favor. Drop me a like. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think about Tesla. Technical analysis. One thing to point out here, a lot of people miss this that are new to the channel. We are long-term investors and we're looking at charts in a different way. We're not looking at these trying to be a day trader or a swing trader. We're looking at it as a long-term investor, where are good areas to buy or to trim, better entry and exit points and possibilities on a chart. The chart's not gonna tell you where the stock's gonna be in five years based off of the fundamentals. The fundamentals are 99% of the puzzle. That last 1%, we look at a chart to see where the stock could go. Now, if you're a day trader or a swing trader, that's totally fine, but you're gonna look at a different chart because this is a yearly chart with daily candles. Now we're looking at Fibonacci pivot points. And that's because it gives you a range. And you can see the range right now, 189 on this S3 support three, the R2 up here, 279, the R3 is that $300 level. And we were buying this stock 175 or less DCA with a preference of 150 or less DCA. So if you're buying it in that 175, 160, 138, you've got a decent cost basis, you're really happy. In fact, a lot of people in Discord were trimming it when it got to 250, $260. It fell down here to 213. Now post-market, the stock's about right here, you know, 230 bucks a share. If the bullish momentum continues, it'll have to claw its way back to 250. Round numbers matter. If it can break past 250, 250, probably 275 is another resistance area that R2 is 279 and then R3 is 300 and you're going to have strong resistance if it does get up there. Now this stock could roll over any time because traders are going to move it. There's going to be a lot of volatility. So if you're investing in the stock, I think that the opportunity was down here in this channel. If you're trading momentum, well, we're going to have to kind of see what happens in the next couple of days. If the greater market continues to sell off like it did today and NASDAQ down around 2%, well, stocks like Tesla are going to have a hard time climbing up to $300 a share. If the market remains bullish, you could see See this 250, 275, 300 dollars probably won't happen overnight. It could even be in 2025 as interest rates continue to go down. If this video is helpful, please make sure to drop me a like, drop me a comment. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.